Five, bro. A UFC fight. Yeah, yeah. One of these days, everybody in this room will be. Bellator or UFC? Bellator or UFC, man. Everybody in this room. Bellator 150 with all of us on it, um, Manny, Ty, Chris, uh, this is a huge deal. EFC helped spark it off too. We're only two shows in, we've pulled the attention of Dana White and we put, well, let's see, let's look at this. Manny Mraz, Chris Harris, Ty Clark are going straight to Bellator now. So you go into a fight like this um, and you get a big knockout, you might be getting played on TV. I've been fortunate enough to, to, to start off with Bellator, build my career there, have many amazing, excellent fights, bring Bellator to my hometown, and then allow these fighters to have this stage, okay? The best thing that these guys can do is go out there and win their fights because they're still at the point in their career where winning fights is the most important thing. Um, and winning them in a dominant fashion is huge. Going out there, being dominant, believing in yourself, getting the finish, and showing that you're ready for the highest level of competition is the best thing that you can do. Um, one thing that I want to see these guys start developing is their, their time on camera, their interviews, their pictures, their, uh, believe it or not, they need to go to social media. They need to be promoting themselves. They need to make their own brand. You have to be an entertaining fighter, but you have to also be a great fighter. 30 seconds, come on Ty, come on. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Bro, come on, come on, guys, come on, go, guys, go, guys. Knee up, one knee up. One I never up. fought anybody I think I could beat up. I always tried to fight. Like, if I seen somebody and he was from somewhere else, I, oh, yeah, I want to fight him. He was tougher. I started off as an instigator, and then everybody was like, well, what, what can you do? The younger dudes respect me, so I never had to fight anybody younger than me. And all the older dudes, they, they looked up to me because how tough I was. I've always, like, lifted weights. Uh, since I was younger, so I was able to be strong. And my big brothers, like, they, I had, I was the youngest brother, so I had three big brothers. It was really tough. It was, oh my God, my big brothers is super, super tough. And we all a year apart. They never fought me. They never fought me. I would get mad and he would be like laughing while I punched him in. And that would make, that's what made me tough. Get up high, get that high man. Man, when Ty came in, man, dude, okay. So, he, Ty's a little thuggish, man, and uh, uh, Ty came in uh, all tough as hell with Brandon Phillips, and uh, you know, we beat, the, beat, we beat those guys up pretty good for a while, and, uh, and then, you know, that's what happens, man. You get better. Those guys started getting better, man. Before we know it, they're beating me up sometimes. What I always thought it was interesting about Ty, we'd teach him striking and striking and striking and striking but then he wouldn't want to wrestle and try to grapple his guys. And I always thought it was kind of interesting because uh, he didn't really have the strongest base. Jiu-Jitsu is uh, one of those things that you can really feel sour about it. It's, it's grueling too, but it's a little bit different on the body. Yeah, yeah. Now try look at him. Try look at him though. Yeah, yeah. I can remember Ty, probably about the Second week I was there training. I know he'd be, he's been through JMTK a lot longer than I have, but I remember him probably about the second or third week of training. Ty has probably been my, uh, I would consider him the guy that I'll sit there and slug back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and until the last one is standing, whether it's a busted leg or a busted face, is Ty Clark and Chris Harris, Brandon, Dave. It's, it's all just a knockdown, drag out fight. I think the most impressive thing about Ty is his athleticism. I mean, that guy, you know, when he's, when his body's moving and in in tune and he's in shape, um, man, he's just, he moves so quick. He's so strong for his weight, 145. And it's, 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 it's kind of surreal. He's not ready yet. We have a month to work on it. We're never ready for the fight. And we always, we always have something extra to do after. We always have that. We are where we're supposed to, but we always have more. Every fight will have more and more and more. 
hard work, hard time, all the time. A lot of talent over here. And you know, so if you if you get with somebody who doesn't have any kind of experience on their ground, it can end up being boring. It can end up being quick. But when you start moving up, I think to the levels that, that you guys are, they should be tangling with guys who, who who know what's going on on the ground. You know. Before I even uh, started doing MMA, I was helping K Man train for his fights back in 2010, and he was getting ready for Peloton. And I see like fighters in the big big stage. They always moving across. They moving across teams and. Trying to get better and to make it with the team that I've been with is it's, it's amazing. It's, it's a dream come true. I pray for fighting. I never had a time in my life where I never quit fighting until uh, God told me to quit fighting because I pray for this talent. Pray for a talent when I have nothing. I'm in Bellator now. I'm undefeated still. You can't stop that. You can't stop hard work for real hard work. It's going to grind itself out. It's going to prove who wants to be the best. No matter what. Fuck you. Let's fight. I got into it just because I can. Just because there was the opportunity to to do it. And if there's an opportunity, knocks. So open the damn door. Kick that motherfucker in one way or another. So, so who uh, whose dick do I gotta get a prostitute to suck to get on Bellator card? I know I'm past my prime. Bellator's giving an, an old dog a chance to uh, bite back into a fight scene. I don't really recall whether it was a phone call or whether it was a message on Facebook, but uh, somebody asked me if I'd be willing to, to fight on Bellator. My, my only response was, do I really have a choice? This is my opportunity. It didn't matter what the pay was. It was, this is the opportunity. You, it knocks, you open that damn door. I'm ready to fuck some shit up. My first memory of Manny was tough as shit, but not very good. <laughs> and he always wanted to grapple, like he was always trying to wrestle back then, man. Manny's not afraid to strike now, but uh, back then, man, Manny always wanted to get in and grapple where he felt more comfortable. Manny was a, a, a he was a former athlete for sure. You know, Manny was definitely top level, very, very, very good. I, I think he was almost 250 pounds when I first met him. What? Yeah, 250. I know it's close. If it, like like you know, I'm sorry, Manny, if I'm off by a couple pounds, but I know it's <laughs> I know it's 240, 250. It might even been more. I, he was huge, you know. Now he's fighting on one of the biggest stages in the world. He's fighting like 170, 185 pounds. When I first got in, got it, got into the team was uh, hard nose. You had fighters. You had fighters that wanted to fight. You had people that came in there that uh, wanted to just knock, and knock the crap out of somebody. You had people that wanted to learn. I'm a James DK for one reason. James DK, uh, Andy Zerger, the, the, the guys there, the, the team as a whole. Uh, we have us an MMA team. We have us a top Midwest MMA team. To get asked to go fight in another country, clear across the world, Man, it was exhilarating just, just to have that. Took a Manny, uh, Manny and a bunch of t uh, a bunch of fighters over to Poland to fight. I uh, mean, I really, I really think Manny uh, really uh, helped him grow as a fighter. And you see all the dignitaries up there. You've seen boxes where you've seen people in uniforms. You've seen people in suits. I, I was quite nervous. Um, I, I was sore, sore at the time, and uh, was dealing with a, uh, a bruised foot, so I didn't want to stand very long with him. When we had the chance to uh, go to the ground, I enjoyed it. I was comfortable. I believe it was two or three fighters from our team beforehand had lost. Yeah, you can put this on. They, they have robbed me. <laughs> Absolute bullshit. Manny, um, Manny did great, man. He wrecked his guy, did great. Um, I ended up winning by decision. Man, that dude can take a shot. Uh, man, I've just seen him take some crazy shots and keep going. And it's... It's impressive, man. Manny has a really hard head. Manny got that experience, you know what I'm saying? He got that old dog, you know what I'm saying? He brings it to the table, you know? Manny's a grind nose wrestler you don't want to deal with. He's going to frustrate you. He's going to get in your face, and he's going to make you hate fighting. Toughest 57-year-old you'll ever meet. My wife always told me, you're going to be that grumpy old man that just goes, fuck you, I don't care. Uh, Manny's a little bit up there, and, uh, and uh, moves a lot better than you would expect him to. There are days where people ask him, man, are you all right, you all right? And I just say, hey, you know what? I'm an old man, I'm a crowley little bitch. This is the shirt that, that a lot of people get a kick out of. This is, this is probably my number one training shirt, minus the one I have on. Jesus loves you, the rest of us think you're an asshole. I'm pretty much an asshole.
we got? Oh my goodness, that Chris Harris signature designer Chris Harris shirts. Whew. Buy one now and you'll feed some hungry child in Africa. <laughs> <laughs> I fight because I enjoy fighting. Plain and simple. The purest form of yourself, like when you're in a fight. Nothing else matters at that point in time except fighting. The person in front of you, everything else goes away. There's no feeling like it. There's nothing I've ever experienced that's like like getting into a cage with another person. I don't think Chris has ever walked into a fight thinking he's gonna lose. He finds the confidence that he needs and he has a very strong mind. The dude also has a lot of other skills like big power and being impossible to knock out, basically. It's hard to fight a fighter like Chris. You can't train for a fighter like Chris. It's kind of like uh, Dominic Cruz. It's like you don't know what his next move is gonna be. Chris also is the type of fighter that's gonna take it to you and he does not stop. I think David told me that they wanted me to fight for him and then asked me if I would. A couple days later, he asked me if I'd fight Julian. And I said, yeah, and then that's when everything got in the works. I don't know if you call it study, and I just watched the beginning of the fights just to see how he starts. Is the rest of the way they fight not important? No, because the opponent that they're fighting isn't me. I don't feel like anybody that I've fought to this day has fought anybody like me, so everything's gonna change. I just wanna see how he starts, like if he's timid or if he's aggressive when he starts. Oh, Are you scared? It'll, no, it'll all change when I hit him. Chris Harris, he's elusive. He just, you know, he's uh, he punch you up, move around, punch you up. He might fix his hair. He might not, you know what I'm saying? Hit you with some more combos. You know, his combos, his punch output is incredible. Like I said, for his size, he's pretty fast. You know what I'm saying? Move around and he's incredibly strong. Chris is the one that's dressed in yellow tonight. He's the, he's the early yeah, yeah. the hair. Yeah. 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 yeah, I mean, when I first met that guy, I, mean, I, I sense the energy on that guy. Yeah, he's, he's, I, I, I he's, he's like, a I knew right then, I said, yeah, this guy's gonna be yeah, yeah, he's, he's a yeah, beast, yeah, too much. The future right here, the future. It starts with Bellator. We don't know where it ends, but it's gonna be a gold belt right here. To see Marquis put the Marquise effect on Chris, uh, I think it's the best thing that could have happened to Chris. Um, I think that it was the, one of the best things that have ever happened to me is just training with Marquise. He's taking those extra steps. He's working uh, harder with Marquise, taking those extra steps to be elite. So I'm reminding them, I'm reminding Chris. You got a while with that. Yeah. Yeah. Got a while. Think about the ass whooping. I'm about to get it. In my last fight, I popped my shoulder out of place in the first round. It like dislocated and then popped back in or whatever. It well, it didn't stay dislocated. Obviously, I could still use it, but after it happened, I shook my arm and felt it pop. The thought that went through my head was that that's gonna hurt after the fight. Well, are you that good or who's that bad? I'm that good. Chris Harris has uh like that magic touch in his hand that most fighters don't have. You can't train it. You can't teach it. What are you going to do? Keep your camera on you. It's going to be over quick. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever's going to happen is going to happen. The work's already put in. No need to be nervous now. Knock out. That's what I always try to do. I try to finish all my fights, but I feel like sometimes I wait more than I should. It took too long. I know I took too long, man. You don't got to tell me. It took way too long. Man, I'll be honest. Chris reminds me a lot of me. Um, he's like... The, the better version of me. He is the will that believes in himself. Um, I see it when Chris fights. I see it in his eyes when we train together. Um, Chris really believes in himself. He be believes in what he's capable of. And I don't know what pushes him. I don't know exactly what it is, but it's something strong. There's always, of course, there's always a pressure to perform. I mean, so obviously. Obviously, I gotta, I have to perform. I'm in a fight. If I don't perform, I'm gonna get my ass beat. And it's different if somebody comes from a different gym to train with him that already has their certain right. way yeah, that they yeah. fight, but you are a product of training with Andy. Like exactly. your striking yeah, is a yeah. product of him. It's like, same with me. Like, I didn't know shit until I was with him. So if I'm yeah. doing something wrong, it's because you didn't tell me to fix it. Dude, it's the foundation <laughs> of all of our success yeah. is Andy Zerger, man. Yeah. I mean, that's something we can't hide and we can't. No, I'm proud to say. Who runs MGK? Andy Zerger. Uh, what has he done for you as a fighter? Um, introduced me to <laughs> MMA. And he's introduced me to a lot of uh, all of my Muay Thai. I, I like to get his his input because his input is in essence my he's my teacher. He's not in essence. He is my teacher. He is my kickboxing teacher. Um, 
he's, he's, he's worked for many years to try to get me to transition from just straight wrestling to actually um, being able to transition from wrestling to kickboxing. Uh, he's everything. He's the reason that I'm the fighter that I am. I mean, I wouldn't know anything as far as striking or any of that without him. He's been teaching me my striking for the last years of my life, pretty much everything I know for striking is through him. Myself and Andy, we go back to like 95, 96. We go back to like spinal cord and car seats. Uh, <laughs> I trained with a guy named Jerry Fontanez um, off and on for a few years. Andy trained with him too. Uh, Andy, we met each other over there and uh, kind of like, you know, became good friends, actually roommates for a while. And uh, Andy was probably the first one that got into the MMA game. and. Uh, Took it to the next level. I've always, I've already, I've always admired Andy, and so uh, when uh, it really kind of surprised me when I came home the other day and there was a message on Facebook. <laughs> Is there will you contact me? I was like, I was really actually pretty honored because I was like, wow. And then it wasn't until actually the first night when I came in and talked to him that I found out that he had a bunch of fighters that were building to him, more were coming up. So to me, it was it, it was not just a step up, but it really made me feel good inside because chance for me not just to move up but I teach people who are going to put to use you know to to be able to work with and that JMTK to me is, is, is an honor man you know, it really is same concept Superman here same concept Superman here right ready to go JMTK 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 and JMTK is you know is a name everybody should know and only so many people know that. Uh, stands for Janjira Muay Thai Kansas. Uh, I took the name of my trainer. Trainers pass on their name to students or to fighters. My trainer passed his name on to me. And that's why it's called Janjira Muay Thai Kansas. Uh, Sex on Janjira out of Dallas, Texas. Well, hey, hey, hey. It's cute. It's like a family kind of thing. They're like his children, you know. They're like his adopted children. I mean, oh my God, JMTK, man, them are my brothers, man. Uh, we've been grinding together for so long. It's been a lot, a lot of hard work. They encourage you to stand back up and fight back. They were always in your corner, ready to, ready to back you up or point out to you what you're doing wrong or what you're doing right. It, it was a, uh, a true knockdown, drag them out fight team. And he's already is like a father to me. Uh, I, I really came from nothing, you know. And he took me in, you know what I'm saying. And like I say, he's a great guy. I just tell him sometimes I didn't have money to pay, and you know he put that to the side. He saw something in me. There's days where I couldn't pay, and I, I didn't show up because I feel bad. He comes to my house like, hey man, we need you at the gym. You're a good guy. I see it in you. Come to the gym. You know, get me when you can. So Andy's a great guy. Like I said, a father figure, and uh, just a great guy all around, man. Appreciate him a lot. I'm Love him. Man, the first time I met Andy Zerger, this is a great story, actually. So, the first time I meet Andy Zerger, uh, I go to the gym. I have a great experience getting beat up by Douglas Whirlwind Edwards, uh, one of the good kickboxers uh, at the gym at that time. Um, Dustin Ryan Blake, Ninja. Um, so I get beat up. Man, these guys humble me. They beat me up in Muay Thai kickboxing. Um, and Zerger, you know, being the good friend and person that he is, um, he invites me out to have some drinks with them, okay? So I go I go over to the gym, I have some drinks with the guys, we get into an altercation, and Zerger beats me up. Zerger beats me up, elbows me a few times, and it gives me, a, it roughs me up a little bit. You know, I deserved it, but so I go home, and man, I'm all hungover, not feeling good, and I wake up the next day and, uh, Zerger is at my door at like seven in the morning. Like just, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, you know, giving me the whole spiel and telling me he wants me back at the gym and everything. And uh, man, that's when I fell in love with Zerger. That's when, uh, that's when uh, me and Zerger's relationship came off uh, to, to the point that it was, you know? And man, it, it was just a, uh, you know, it was a real bonding moment, man. Uh, as weird as that may sound to some people, but like, you know, he kind of beat me up and then he comes over the next day and invites me over back to the gym. And it was, it was kind of weird, but great at the same time. You guys are gonna be future stars, aren't you? You guys are gonna be tag team champions of the world, right? <laughs> future tag team champions of the world. Calling it right now. I, I, I wasn't sure how bad my nose was, uh -huh. but I knew it wasn't good. 
blood was just pooling. Blood all over the place, oh man, yeah. it was everywhere. It was pooling in my eyes. And it was it was all over my face. And uh, uh, I remember laying there, and I'm 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 taking heavy shots, heavy punches, and I'm like, keep going, keep going. This is the game plan. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm like, this is the game plan. He's gonna be tired, but I just couldn't recover. When I was in there, man, all I could think about was like something's wrong. I just knew something was wrong. I was like, man, something's wrong with my nose. <laughs> I knew instantly, like, this shit is broke. Right before the punch, I started to land. I started to get confident. And, uh, you know, he, he told me he would never back up in the fight, and I had him backing up. And I think that was one of those moments where I got a little too confident, and I dropped my hand. Got caught with a big punch right to the nose. Um, you know, my clarity was great. Um, he went for a submission after he broke my nose, didn't get that, came up on top of me. Um, the blood was pooling in my face. It was, a, I was a wreck, I was a mess. Blood was everywhere and he was raining down punches, heavy punches, heavy shots. Um, I was telling my body to get up and I just, I couldn't get up. It wasn't the fight that I wanted to see. Was it lucky? I think the clipping was. I think Michael Chandler just just capitalized on uh, capitalized on, on, on a, ex a well executed punch. Uh, there, I don't think there's any lucky punches in MMA. He meant that Chandler meant to throw the punch, so it wasn't lucky. He threw the punch on his own. He was just starting to take over a little bit, and then that crazy wild shot hit him. So um, this last one was a little bit uh, hard to take, you know, as opposed to the first one. I gotta get back on my top contender status, so I gotta get this uh, win over Bobby Cooper. And we all got tough fights. There's no easy fights in Bellator. I gotta start from the bottom again, man. I gotta start from the bottom and work my way up. And it's, you know, I'm not afraid of hard work, man. And I do have not one dream work. and one goal, and that's to be the world champion. And preparing for this fight, the Bobby Cooper fight, Bellator 150, um, I've made some big changes, man. I've come away from my family. I've gone up to Colorado with Team Elevation, um, and they've got, man, some elite trainers there and elite training partners. Um, the coaches, uh, um, Leister Bowling and uh, Elliot Marshall. And then as well, you know, I'm back here learning uh, from Andy Zerger up there. When I'm training kickboxing, I'm working with Dwayne Ludwig. So I needed to change a little bit of my, you know, my training strategy, uh, hence why I went up to uh, Colorado to Team Elevation. And, uh, you know, th that sort of thing has really paid dividends in my confidence and, uh, man, you know, learning new things, like getting outside the box, learning new things instead of kind of having that same regimen over and over again. Look at this. Look at this. Is it a struggle to be away from family? Look at her cute little face. Look at that. Yes, it's hard being away from family. Um, I love these little kiddos. She's got her birthday coming up, don't you? So yes, it is. Elsa cake. Yeah, you'll have an Elsa cake. But yes, it is hard being away from family, but it's also very motivating. Bellator 150, and we've got four of JMCK's finest. I believe in my guys. I believe in Chris. I believe in Ty. I believe in Manny. And fighting in front of cameras in a huge crowd like the way that it is, is, is completely different. It really is. And I think that these guys are the characters that shine in these moments. And, uh, you know, this is where we get to prove it. This is where JMTK gets to prove that we, we've been building this since day one. We are ready to fight and it's the four horsemen. What are you going to be doing one week from right now? Are you going to be sitting in a dark room listening to classical music? Or are you going to be getting pumped up? Are you going to be trying to take care of something that, that doesn't have something to do with I'm your fight? I'm going to be amped up because the four horsemen of JMTK are going to be repping the city, man. All of my guys from JMTK are on that card. We are the four horsemen and we're mounting up, preparing for battle. We got five guys on the same car and uh, we're going to make JMT known. Uh, you know, JMTK known for one of the best striking gyms in the Midwest. If, if you want to learn how to fight, come to JMTK pretty much, all I have to say. It's always a team effort. No no one fighter does it by himself. It takes the whole team. Mm -hmm. It takes the whole team to, 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 to be a good fighter. You know, I put in, you know, thousands of hours of teaching, you know, to those guys, but the bottom line, it's really, it's really those guys. I'm just excited to watch the team perform. Final question here, Bobby Cooper, 12 and five, biggest stylistic difference between you and him, and what do you think is your key to the victory next week? Stylistically, uh, he's a stuck in the mud, 
slow fighter and i'm basically you know flash gordon out there dude. <laughs> we, yeah man i'm just putting on i'm fighting bobby cooper from kansas city not kansas okay kansas city missouri he's not a local fighter he is not the hometown hero that's me you know i've i've, I've uh made some changes and stuff like that like i don't know dude i just feel elite right now i feel great you like this is like I'm just like giving off that vibe, huh? You guys can feel the Probably. energy. I Probably see it because you're getting some oxygen. <laughs> <laughs>